Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us this week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Bible Sticks, an unlikely calling, is a book that illustrates more than a hobby. It actually describes a ministry, a simple hobby, wood carving, inspiring thousands around the world. For Ron Vance, these unique carvings that started out as a modest teaching tool for young people at his church now are used to motivate others, not only by teaching God's Word, but also encouraging the listener to find their own ministry. Ron's book is filled with photos and stories of the Bible sticks. Ron has had three ministries in two states, Ohio and Kentucky, most recently a long ministry with the Western Hills Church of Christ in Cincinnati since 1987. He's been in associate positions in all his ministries, focused on youth and education, a graduate of Christian University with two degrees, author of Bible Sticks, an unlikely calling, Ron Vance, with us on This Week in America. Ron, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. I am very excited to be here also. I am excited about this because you have got really a unique talent that sort of you didn't set out to do this. And let's start right at the beginning of the book, which will give us a little insight in, into your mindset as, as you go into projects like this. You've got two okay. of your favorite uh, verses in there from, from Colossians chapter 3. Give us those because they've really been sort of the, uh, the roadmap you've used through your life. I have I have a Bible right here, and uh, I, these are definitely some of my favorite verses. Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, And whatever you do, and I love the way it starts out, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. In other words, whatever you do, do something that will bring glory and honor to God. And then the second one is found in that same chapter. I think it's fascinating. It's in that same chapter of Colossians 3, just a few verses down from there. And verse 23 starts out, whatever you do, the same way, whatever you do, says, work, uh, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. In other words, whatever you do, do your very best. And so I have taken those two verses as a model for my life to, first of all, do whatever I do to glorify God, and then secondly, do my very best. And I have discovered if you take those two principles— you know, God will bless it beyond anything you ever imagined. And uh, this book is just uh, one example of the, how he's done that in my life. And very simple principles. And I wanted to start with that because that really forms, again, what you are doing and how it's, it's very simple and can make a huge difference, not only in your life, but in the lives of other people. As I mentioned, you're touching thousands of people around the world. You'll find, by the way, if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, there's a video version of the program, which is up on YouTube. And in a few minutes, Ron will be showing some of his, his carvings. You can get the audio version. You can pass along to people. Uh, the book's available at Page Turner, and we'll go through that here in, in a few seconds. But this, I mentioned you, you started this position in 1987. 1988, you're asked to be a dean for a week at Wilderness Camp, at Woodland Lakes Christian Camp uh, in Amelia, Ohio. It all started for you there. This was not a grand, uh, grand scheme you had in mind that I'm going to do this. You were what looking not at for? All. You were looking for a walking stick. Out of looking for a walking stick, uh, it became became Bible sticks. We uh, we did a lot of hiking that week, so I thought, you know what, I need a good walking stick. So I picked up an old piece of wood off the ground. This is what I used to hike with. As the week went, I thought, you know what, I've never really tried a whole lot of carving before. I'm going to carve the name of the camp. So it says Wood in the Lakes on that side. I put the date, which was back in 1988. I even filled it with names. It wasn't a big group, 11 of us all together, but it has everybody's name who came to that week. And so this was the first thing I ever carved. You know, and it's interesting how things happen. Shortly after that, you're at your cousin's wedding. She did something there that clicked with you when you thought, you know, I could take these, these wood carvings that I'm doing and put a message on them. Yeah, uh, that's why I decided... Uh, it was kind of a challenge from one of the men from my church. Uh, you know, so what are you going to do with the, that stick that you carved? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to carve one I can use as a teaching tool because I'm always trying to come up with w new ways of teaching the young people at my church. And at my cousin's wedding, I saw they had the banners around the auditorium, the, the worship center, with all the, the, the apostles and then a symbol that represented their life. I thought, that's a great idea for a stick. So uh, I carved this one right here. It has the names of the 12 apostles and then something underneath each name. For example, Peter, I have keys because he was given the keys to the kingdom. 
for Andrew, we have Fish, because he was a fisherman. John's Hearts, because he was a beloved apostle. The Doubting Thomas, I have two hands, one's pointing to the nail print in the other hand. So each of the apostles have some sort of symbol that represented their life. I then use a wood burning tool to darken in the, in the diff, different areas. And after I carved this, I got such a reaction from it. I thought, <laughs> well, maybe I'll try another idea. So that's kind of what got me started doing these. You know, after all that you've done, and we'll talk about some of the, the different sticks and the, and the messages, that one, the 12 apostles, I would think would have to be special. This was sort of your, your entry into this. It was, and there's no way that I thought I could do something like that. And, uh, you know, I think I was uh, as amazed as anybody, if not more, uh, with the way it turned out. And so, uh, you know, again, that's why I've concluded this is all a gift from God. And, you know, if it were up to my skills and abilities, they would all look like that first <laughs> stick I showed you, that camp stick. But it's because of what God can do that other things can come about. And the tools you use, once again, it shows God's influence in doing this. This is not like you've got this huge workshop and you've got three, four people working for you on this process. You basically used, uh, I want to say primitive tools, but basic tools like uh, like most of us have. Yes, I just use an X-Acto knife. And uh, I do have my knife here with me. <laughs> I start out using this years ago, and I still use the same knife today. Um you know, just an exacto. People have told me, you need to get a better carving knife. So I, I did buy a really nice carving knife. Didn't like it. <laughs> Found myself <laughs> going back to the exacto. I, I think part of it's what you're used to. But I, I do like exactos because if the blade goes dull, you just pull it out, throw in a new blade, and you're good to go again. And I, I don't go through blades that often. People think, oh, you must go through like a blade a day. But it comes out to maybe three or four a year. So, um, you know, it's not like I go through them all the time. How long does it take, and I know it's varying degrees of time that you've got involved in each of these, but what is the time span to do, a, to do an individual stick? Um, the first one start out you know, really quick, you know, because uh, they're a little easier and small, or not as complicated, maybe um, half a year to a year. And then as time went, you know, uh, they became more challenging because I'm always pushed myself. You know, uh, trying to think, you know, what can I do to take myself to the next level? And um, so the later ones took me a year and a half to two years. Uh, one of the, the most uh, you know, latest sticks I've carved actually took me three years to carve. So uh, you know, start out a little bit shorter, but as time goes, I, like I said, I'm always pushing myself to see what I can do next. If you go to uh, YouTube or go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us YouTube channel, you'll see Ron, and he's holding up some of the sticks as we're talking. Of course, you can see all of the sticks and the stories behind them in his book. It's called Bible Sticks, and Unlikely Calling by Ron Vance. The book is available basically wherever books are sold. It's a republished book now available for sale in ebook and paperback at its lowest retail price. Available for sale in all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press and Media Direct Orders, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia and New Zealand, and many more. Links directly to the Page Turner author site by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. It's interesting how creative you are in, in doing this, not only the idea and then implementing that, but you've got one, the Armor of God, which you ended up putting in a clear plastic tube, and that's really not how that project started out, did it? It was by necessity that you came up with this whole uh, tube concept. Uh, yeah, that's this one right here. I call it the Armor of God, and I think it was just the day after I finished carving it. One of the kids from my church was looking at it. I was in another room when all of a sudden I heard a crack. <laughs> I walk in. He hands it to me in two pieces. Right here is where it broke. He goes, I don't know what happened. He goes, all I saw was just flip it up in the air, <laughs> and when it hit the ground, it broke. And um, I always wondered how I would react if anyone ever broke any of these. Uh, that boy is still living today. <laughs> <laughs> but I um, had to put it in a plastic tube because any time I took it anywhere to show, all you had to do is just barely tap it. It would break again. But you know what? You know, uh, I think there's a reason why this all happened because it has the armor of God. And someone once came up to me one time after I was done speaking about these sticks. They said, I know why you put that in a plastic tube. They said it makes a great double illustration. 
just as the passage talks about how we need to protect ourselves from Satan, they said the stick needs protection from the people it handled all the time. I thought, I'd never even thought of that before. So maybe God did have a purpose there after all. But So I'm not you know, embarrassed to have this in a plastic tube at all. And uh, it's just another way you know, how God is able to work in unusual ways. You know, as you were saying that, I'm thinking the, the armor of God, if you would have planned it, it wouldn't have worked out much better because it yeah. really illustrates the, uh, the point you're trying to, to make with that. You've got exactly. two that are real, but they're all very interesting. But to take a walking stick, do the wood carving, and do it in chain form, which you've done with the Old Testament chain and the New Testament chain. Talk about this and how this idea came about. To, and you're holding them up now for the, the, the video. Yeah. To, to do them in, in chain mm -hmm. form. The, um, someone came up to me one time and said, I heard it's possible to take a stick and carve a chain out of it. I thought, there's no way. The way the links are connected, it cannot be done. Well, I took a stick and started experimenting and was able to make a chain. Had no plans for it. I was just making a chain, but ended up with 39 links. I thought, 39. You know what? I'm going to put on here the 39 books of the Old Testament. So each link has a different uh, book listed. For example, you know, here we have um, Zephaniah. And okay. not only do I have the word listed, but I came up with one word to describe that book. So you see it has the word judgment and even how many chapters. So each link has a lot of information. So uh, it just turned out, you know, much better than what I originally planned. So, you know, I use a wood burning tool to darken it or to uh, to do the letterings on this stick right here. So it turned out really nice after all. The book we're talking about is Bible Sticks, an unlikely calling by Ron Vance. Information available at pageturner.us. You can link on directly by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us and Ron's website as well as biblesticks.org. One that jumped out at me, the humorous teaching of Jesus and you say people will often ask you, what if you make a mistake? I mean, you get going, you've got six months in this thing, and you're making a mistake. Talk about that, because that actually came up during the making of this stick. Yeah, um, it's called The Humorous Teachings of Jesus. I <laughs> decided to carve it out of oak, because I always wanted to try oak. Uh, it's a very beautiful type of wood. I love the grain, but you know what? It is an extremely hard wood. So now I've done one in oak, I, I don't care to do oak again. But <laughs> what I did is I did the title, and then I did all these little separating sections. So by now, I've already put into this thing 30 hours. I'm ready to do my first passage. It says, Pearls of Pigs. I even show where you can look it up in your Bible. It says Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. After I carved that in there, I want to make sure it's correct. You know what? Matthew 6, 7 says absolutely nothing about pearls or pigs or anything like that. Now, what in the world did I do? I discovered I switched those two numbers around. It's not supposed to be, or it's not Matthew 6-7. It's supposed to be Matthew 7-6. I was so frustrated because, uh, again, I put in 30 hours. This is carved out oak. It's extremely hard wood. Um, I now have a major mistake. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't just cut the letter or the numbers out and then re-glue them in the right spot because, one, it will not look right, and, two, it will probably break off in time. After about a month, I finally came up with an idea, you know, uh, right above the six and the seven. I don't know if I can get that close enough to show that or not. Oh, yeah, with the video, it, we can see that, I yes. I carved a little arrow. That means if you want to find this passage, you need to switch these two numbers around. Um, because I um, typed up a piece of paper with all my passages I was going to put on this stick, that one I typed wrong, so that's why I carved it in there wrong. So... I finally uh, put the arrow above there, which means if you want to find this passage, you need to switch these two numbers around. Well, I thought, before I go any further, I better check the other. So I look them all up. We're good to go. The next one says, Camel through a needle's eye, um, Mark 11.25. After I carved that in there, I looked it up to make sure it's correct also. <laughs> you know what? Mark 11.25 says nothing about camels <laughs> or needle's eye. <laughs> right now I have two mistakes. I'm at the very beginning. This is not good at all. <laughs> I look for my paper did not say Mark 11:25. My paper said Mark 10:25. Uh, Why put 11 not 10? I still have no clue to this day. Well, after about a month or so, I finally came up with another idea. Underneath the 11, you'll see I carved a little minus one. That means if you want to find this passage, you need to subtract one chapter. 
I thought, well, maybe I should make a mistake on the rest of these. So uh, <laughs> they all kind of match. I thought, no, I'm not going to do that on purpose. But to me, it's God's way of making the stick even more humorous than what I originally intended. So here we have the humorous teachings of Jesus, made even more humorous by God. Yes, once again, you've got the title of the stick and you've got the story behind that that makes it all the all the more relevant. A couple of minutes left in the program, going going by way too quickly. I, I want to talk about what you said is maybe one of your, your favorite sticks. That's the Christmas stick, and you did this. Not that it's not complicated enough, but you did this all in Spanish. I did, and let me locate that stick here real quick. Whoops. Excuse me for a second. That And again, YouTube, you'll see the video for this, and you can buy the book, Bible Sticks, An Unlikely Calling. Uh, pictures, the story behind all of the different sticks, and you've got the one there that we were talking about, the Christmas stick, all in Spanish. Yeah. Um, we have a number of deaf people come to our church. So that's why I wanted to do one in sign language. And also we have a number of Spanish speaking who come to our church. And I take our young people on mission trips to Mexico every year. We've been doing this for over 25 years. So I wanted to do something in Spanish. This one, uh, it's a Christmas stick, so it's very simple, but you know, it's all in Spanish. The very top simply says, Feliz Navidad, because I knew people would be familiar, familiar with that phrase because yes. of the song you hear on the radio. And then I have everything labeled that you have in a manger scene. But what makes it most unique, it's all carved on the inside. To do that, I carve four pillars for each section, leaving as much wood on the inside from the wood on the inside. I then carve the image that's being described. So it's all one piece of wood, but carved to make it look like different pieces glued together. I have an angel or a star, an angel, the shepherd, baby Jesus. I have Mary. I have Joseph, a little sheep, a camel, and the wise man. So uh, it's definitely one of my favorite sticks. People would ask as, as they're watching, like, how do you use these? You have these. These are wonderful works of art. How are you able to use this uh, these as part of the ministry? I, um, I start out doing these as a teaching tool for the young people at my church. And uh, I thought, boy, if they can see or if they hear me t telling a story or teaching the Bible, but then they can see it and even hold it, you know, uh, using three different senses to reinforce that. You know, they might remember it a lot better. And so I started doing these as a simple teaching tool for the young people at my church. But then people started coming up to me and said, hey, you know, uh, I have a group that, you know, I think they would enjoy looking at these. And so then it started working out where I started traveling all over the place with these things to share. So I've traveled all over the country. I've been to other countries. I've been to Mexico. Canada, uh, Venezuela, Chile, New Zealand. So I have been uh, had an opportunity to travel all over the world with these things to share. And so now when I go around and speak, I will tell the story of one of the sticks, and then I'll pass that around so everybody can hold up close. Again, I want them to be able to hold these things so that you know, it helps reinforce that uh, information that I just gave them. And so everybody will pass them around, and as those are being passed around, I bring out the next one, tell the story of that. It's a 45-minute program that I do, but it is a program that seems to go by very quickly. And people will come up and tell me afterwards. They said, boy, I have learned more about the Bible in this one setting than I've had like a whole year's worth of Bible school lessons. So, uh, again, just using uh, all those different senses to reinforce that, you know, it's a great way to learn. No, it's interesting. You you look in the, in the crowd. You make sure Travis isn't there, and then you hand the the, <laughs> the, 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 the stick so you can pass that around. Uh, that's funny. How again that story where it ended up broken, and you end up and with this with this great yeah. idea. Uh, it's it's also interesting that you started in this began in 1988 at the uh, the wilderness camp. You're still there, active, right? You still go back and I am. Did you ever I, get a, uh, Do you ever get a walking stick that's functional that you can actually use? Yeah, I okay. uh, every year, um, <laughs> because of that first year, you know, my second year, I went and uh, carved another stick, put everybody's name. So this summer will be my 30th year doing that week of camp. So I do a new new stick every year. I've got a couple of those over here, too. Which are just uh, amazing, something you still do for everybody that's, uh, that's at the camp. So this one is kind of fun. It's, I took a cedar log. And, of course, you don't want to be hiking with a log, so I cut it down, made it skinny for most of it, but the skinny part is filled with names, and I'll actually do the carving during that week. Uh, but the top of the log, 
I wanted to leave something, but I didn't know what to do, so I just left the big part of it. And then I took a drill and drilled a bunch of holes and then connected the holes, and that's the design that came out. So it turned out pretty good. So uh, yeah, now I'll have about 30 kids come to my week of camp and with about 12 staff. So we usually have about 42. I limit it to that number because uh, you don't want to be camping out with much more than that. This one's kind of fun also. I uh, came up with an idea to put these letters that spin around. And so you have to line the letters up so they will have the message that's supposed to say. Oh, so yeah. That just has the name of the camp. And that's the just dates a, and stuff like that. It's so innovative, and in, in what you do, it's just incredible. You have to uh, to check the video from the interview today to see what we're talking about and get the book. The book is Bible Sticks, An Unlikely Calling by Ron Vance, our guest on the program. It's a republished book now available for sale in ebook paperback at its lowest retail price, available for sale in all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press, and Media Direct Orders, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the U.K., Okay, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and a lot more. Ron, a minute or so left in the program. I've mentioned Page Turner here, and I know we were talking about it before the program, the really outstanding book cover that you have. What's this experience been like for you in working with Page Turner? Yeah, they, they contacted me first and said, uh, you know, we think, you know, we, you know, we can do really well with this book. Um, you know, we can... Uh, you know, get the word out about it. They said it is such an unusual book, something that, you know, is not like any other book that you'll find anywhere. And, uh, you know, they were great to work with. The The pictures in this book are very challenging because, you know, I wanted to use the, the full width of the, yes. the pages from one page to the other to stretch these uh, pictures of the sticks out. And uh, I know it had to be very challenging to do, you know, what I wanted this to come out like. And they did a great job. So uh, just real pleased with the way the, the book turned out. The cover looks wonderful. Again, they came up with the cover idea. And uh, I'm just very pleased with that also. So uh, they've been great to work with. That's pageturner.us uh, to get information on Page Turner. The book is Bible Sticks, An Unlikely Calling. Ron Vance, the author, our guest on the program. Ron, it was great reading the book, getting the story behind the story on all the different Bible Sticks. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, you know, looking forward to you know, what else I can do in the future. Well, I'm sure that there are big plans because you've really touched a lot of people with Bible Sticks and Unlikely Calling. That's the book. You'll find it at pageturner.us in the bookstore. Uh, Ron's website is biblesticks.org, and you can get all this information and link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Okay, thanks.